This is the Jail Ministry Podcast. The J-A-I-L, or Jesus Acts and Inmates Lives Ministry, is Christ-centered and provides programs focused on the prevention and intervention for the incarcerated. Jail Ministry also provides support to offenders, criminal justice professionals, victims, and their families. Thank you for your continued financial assistance. For more information, visit jailmen.org. Now, here's today's lesson. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. This is, I usually say Reverend Eric Walton. I'm going to say Evangelist Eric Walton. I'm going to change it, all right? And uh, thank God for you. Glad you're here. The Evangelist is here. The Word of God is here. The Holy Spirit is here. Are you here? Amen. And uh, I think you are. I want to thank you for all your faithful uh, uh, watching and studying and listening. Go ahead and take your Bibles and turn to Matthew chapter 3, verse 13. Remember the last time we were together, uh, I was teaching on baptism, John the Baptist's baptism. Today we're going to teach you on the baptism of Jesus Christ. And you might say to yourself, why are we doing this? Because uh, uh, when, we bat when we did water baptism at the facilities I work in, uh, a lot of the people really didn't understand baptism. And I said, well, the way you correct all misunderstandings dealing with spiritual things is you go to the Bible and see how the Bible says it. Amen. So, again, this baptism is one we cannot do today. Amen. We cannot do it today. And uh, uh, 15 uh, if you'd read that, but Jesus answered and said to him, permit it to be so now. Well, I need to write, read 14. Well, let me just start, start at 13. Uh, Matthew 3, 13, 14, and 15. We'll read those, pray, and, and we'll kind of just uh, gloss over real quick. Uh, we cannot do this baptism today either. Yes, it is baptism where you dip somebody on the water and the whole body is submerged and it is metaphorically or spiritually saying to God, I'm dying to this and coming alive to that. It's the same baptism as we use for new believers in uh, Matthew 28. However, it is not. Uh, the mode is the same, but the reason is different. Amen. Uh, then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. In verses 2 and 6, they are ba being baptized because they're confessing their sins and repenting. The word repenting means I am turning from the way I'm going 180 degrees. I'm confessing my sins and saying I want to turn from them and turn to God. That's a 180 degree turn is what it literally means. Amen. I'm following the way of the flesh, the world, and the devil. And uh, I'm turning from all of that. Amen. Amen. This baptism, let me see, verse 13. And Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and are you coming to me? And a question mark, amen. John realizes who he is. When we get down to the end of this in verse 16 and 17, John's really going to be sure of who he is. You are the Messiah. You are the anointed one. You are the one that's called. This is the initiation and the announcement of the ministry of the Messiah. Before, it was John's announcement of his and that he's coming to do about the forerunner of the Messiah. But here, this baptism starts his earthly ministry. In the Gospel of Luke, I believe it's chapter 2, he says, And Jesus being about 30 years of age. It is not directly on his birthday, but he's about 30 years old. And we can tell by the number of pass Passovers that are in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, we can tell by the number of Passovers he ministered for a little over three years. He died on the third Passover. All right. And he started a little bit before the first one that's going on. Amen. V verse uh, 15 but Jesus answered and said to him, said to John the Baptist, by the way, they're cousins. They may have talked to each other before this. The Bible does not record that. 
when Mary visited Elizabeth, John the Baptist leaped in Elizabeth's womb, his mother's womb. She was an older woman past the age of childbearing. It was a miraculous sign that he was there. He was a Nazarite. He had taken the Nazarite vow, his mama and him took the Nazarite vow. He's already, that's Numbers chapter 6. We're not going to get into that in this message. But uh, uh, no grape juice, no wine, no raisins, no nothing. The mama didn't do it while she carried him. And then when she had him, he's never done it. By the way, his age is six months older than Jesus. So he's about 30 years old. Amen. He's a little bit older than Jesus. In Matthew chapter 11, he dies. And Jesus again uh, highlights his ministry and says, No greater prophet has ever lived than John the Baptist. What a statement. 4,000 years of prophets. And he says, None is never greater than John the Baptist. Why? He is the forerunner of the Messiah. He is the one to announce that he is coming. Amen. Here he is. And you know, he would be the bridegroom. The, bri the bridegroom. Uh, uh, or or the, the groomsman. The head groomsman. I am announcing that the groom is coming. And, and the church is married. The, the church is the bride of Christ. And he is announcing that he is coming. He is the one. Make straight roads. We read that last week in 13, uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. So uh, let's have a word of prayer. And let's go on with our lesson today. And uh, we're going to turn a couple of other places today. Father, thank you for your mercy and grace. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for these lessons on baptism. Thank you for what you're doing with jail ministry. I pray Jabez's prayer, enlarge our coast. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse us where we failed yet. Help us stay on the right track. Get on the right track. Be more on the right track that you may bless this ministry and we can reach billions of people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Enlarge our coast. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, not to satisfy our flesh or something like that, but to glorify and honor you. We're breathing your air. We're walking on your dirt. We're drinking your water. And uh, we'll never be worthy of all you've done for us. But let us just do a little bit more for you in this ministry. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. Now, uh, um, obviously, let's go back to 13. We're only going to do 13 to 17. This is the baptism of Jesus. As we go through here, I've already said it, but I'll, I'll, when we get to the verse on it, it is clear. When he says, permit it to be so now today, why? it can only be done then. Jesus only gets announced one time. He gets an, an, an initiating and the starting of his ministry. Me and my wife got married June 6, 19, uh, not 19. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was 19 something. Amen. June 6th, uh, uh, it wasn't 96. Amen. It, it, was, it was something, about, let me see, I can think of it. 90, oh, it'll come to me. But we were married on June 6, 6, 6. Amen. And, and the point I'm making, I've been married 42 years. I got that part down packed, amen. Uh, um, the, the point being there is our, our initial marriage can only be one time. And then after that, we say we're having anniversaries. But that big one's a big deal. Walking down the aisle, here come the bride. And everybody stands up. And they take pictures and all this other stuff. And, 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 and lighting the two candles and putting out the two and, and lighting up one candle. And it's not two lives with the two fleshes became one. All that stuff. It can only be once, one time. It's a big deal. Then Jesus came from Galilee, way up here by the uh, Sea of Galilee and all that. And he comes down uh, uh, basically by the Jordan River uh, outside the town of J Jerusalem, the capital of the, uh, uh, the center of the world, the capital of the center of the world, Israel. That is correct. I don't have time to get into that today. All right. And he comes down here and, and, uh, to Galilee and, and, and he says that the Jordan to be, and he comes to the Jordan to be baptized by him, John the Baptist, who will in the the end of his life, Jesus said he's the greatest prophet of all times. Amen. And, and he says, baptize me. What is he doing with that baptizing? He is identifying with those of us who do need to confess our sins, who do need to repent. Amen. All right. When he does that, he's authenticating Amen. He's authenticating John's ministry as well. The Messiah is authenticating it. John is the big cheese all over the country right now. 
uh, uh, as Jesus comes on the scene and after this, from this time forward, John decreases, Jesus increases. And you think, well, man, that's bad for John. No, it didn't. John said, I must decrease, but he must increase. I'm coming baptizing you with water. He's coming and he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. I don't do drugs no more. I don't do alcohol. I don't do all that crazy because the Holy Ghost is in me. Before this time period, the Holy Ghost would come on somebody maybe. But in the New Testament church, the Holy Ghost comes in us. Ephesians 1.13. He's the down payment on your eternal salvation. He is also the one that empowers you in your soul and in your spirit. If you feed your spirit, man, he will empower you to stop living that wild, crazy life. Amen. Your flesh will still want to do it when we rapture or we resurrect up to God. 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 35 to 55. Uh, around that area when we, when we take this corruptible and put on incorruption, you'll be completely saved. Amen. You're saved. You're being saved. And you'll finally be saved when we go to glory. Amen. And you put on that new body. Amen. So two reasons to identify with us. There's four altogether. The second one I said was to authenticate John the Baptist's ministry. And even though he's sinless, he's identifying, and it, the Bible says, the remnant of Jews. By the way, it's all still, still clearly a Jewish religion at this time. It is not Gentile. We are Gentiles. It'll turn into a Gentile religion full force once you get into the book of Acts after chapter 13. It'll go totally uh, uh, Gentile. Amen. But, uh, and the third reason, even though he is sinless, he is, he is further identifying with these faithful people. When you hear the word remnant, talking about Israel coming out of some kind of situation. So they're, they're not coming out of physical captivity. They're coming out of spiritual captivity. Well, they're not coming out of it. They're still, you know, you're talking 80, 90% of the people ain't living for God. They're following the scribes, the Pharisees, and the Sadducees. We saw that back over in chapter 13, verse 7, uh, in the last message. They're following all those crazy, worthless people. Stupid people. But this remnant here, they're following the Bible. I go to a, a certain church that is a certain denomination. I'll stay with them as long as they follow the Bible. When they quit following the Bible, I'll quit following them because I'm following God's word. Amen. You ought to do the same thing. Um, amen. So, and the, and the last thing, the baptism so Jesus Christ choose sinless character with a divine witness. When we get down to the end of this, God the Father will say, uh, John the Baptist will see, see a dove descending on him. Uh, the Holy Ghost, uh, he'll see the Holy Ghost like as a dove, like a dove. So it's not a dove that descends on him. It's like a dove. The Holy Ghost will give that appearance and it will come down on him and, and come into him. Amen. And it's, it's for our benefit. He already is, is God. Amen. He's already got the Spirit of God. The Spirit of Christ is the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. And then God the Father will say, this is my beloved love son and whom I am well pleased. Amen. Can God say that about you? This is my beloved son or daughter. I'm well pleased in him. Amen. And uh, um, also his baptism shows something else. Those four reasons I grave here. But it shows that his, he is God the son and he is submissive to God the father. Remember what I said. I, I haven't read the verse yet. I'm going to read it again in a little while or, or read it, read it, read it in a little while in a second here as, as we go through this message. But, but John the Baptist says, you, I have need to be baptized by you. you. You're coming to me for me to baptize you? Do you see Jesus' submissiveness to the leading and calling and the text of God? Amen. And you think, wow, look what he did. By the way, he's getting baptized. In verses um, 2, uh, they're coming and it says, and saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
Amen. So they're coming to be to repent. And then in verse six, it says, um, and were baptized by him, John the Baptist, in the joy, confessing their sin. Jesus has no sins. Now, I'm, I'm only going to do this here. Turn over to Hebrews. Keep your finger here in Matthew chapter 3, verse uh, 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 13, 14, 15. We're going to do the whole thing here. But it, it'll say over in Hebrews um, um, 4, 15. The Bible will say, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. Jesus is also our high priest. He's our Savior. What does the priest do? He makes offerings from man to God. When you pray and ask Jesus, say, I believe he is the Son of God. He died for me. He paid my sin debt. When you say that, that's the offering you're making to God. The high priest is making an offering to God. All right, sympathize. And this high priest, Jesus, he can sympathize or understand or empathize with our weakness, our sinful weaknesses, amen, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. He had zero sin. He never sinned. But he was tempted 100%, just like we, in all ways. There's no, but he understands. And when, when the devil accuses you, the accuser of the brethren, when he, oh, look at the sin Eric did. Oh, look at the sin Steve did. Look what Melvin did. Look what, well, look what Bonnie did. Or look what so-and-so did. You know, when the devil is accusing you before the Father, Jesus steps in and makes intercession for us. And he says, Father, he has my blood on him. I've paid his sin debt. He has my role. Father says he's innocent. He's, in, he's declared righteous. He's justified through the blood of Jesus Christ. And uh, by the way, it says over in the book of Hebrews, and uh, I think it's in chapter 3, he says, He will save you to the uttermost. I don't care how deep in the gutter you come from. I don't care what sins you've ever done. He saves to the uttermost. Amen. So go back with me if you would to Matthew. And uh, uh, I wanted you to see that he is getting baptized. That's why John the Baptist saying to him, you, you want to be baptized by me and, and I'm baptism for baptizing for confession of sins and re repentance, turning from those sins. Well, you've done none. You're God. John the Baptist knows who and what he is. He knows he's the son of God. He knows he's the savior. He knows he's the deliverer, the rescuer. Amen. He knows. All right. Let's go on to the next verse, verse 14. And John tried to prevent him saying, I need to be baptized by you. And you are coming to me. Amen. You're coming over here. Amen. And, and uh, I, I want to read verse 17 in chapter 3. And, and suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. You remember I said his submission he is submitting even though he's God. What submissions are you doing to God? God, I give you authority to tell me who to marry, where to live at, what job to give, everything. I am submitting all. I am dying to self. That's what we all need to do. God, I, all my crimes, all my uh, uh, lust and, and, and interest I have or things I want to do, I'm submitting to you, God. I'll do whatever you want. Are you submitting like Jesus is? Amen. He is our example. Amen. That's part of what he is. So uh, 14, John the Baptist tried to prevent him because in verse two, he doesn't need to repent because he never sinned. Hebrews 4, 15. He doesn't, he doesn't need to confess sins because again, he never, never sinned. Amen. That's in 14a, amen. And John tried to be saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you are coming to me. Verse 2, John the Baptist is a spiritual man. He's led by the Holy Ghost. He's very aware that Jesus Christ is the Messiah and that he's God, uh, God the Son, and that he's the Savior of the humanity, amen. Are you aware of that? Does your life show that? If it doesn't, pray and say to God the Father, I realize that Jesus Christ is your son and he's God and he died for me. Please forgive me of my sins and save me. Amen. I believe, I believe that Jesus is the Christ. Amen. The anointed one. And uh, uh, so let's see here. Verse 14c, I need to be baptized by you. You know, 
John realizes we all have sin and need a savior. So and, and is so is the the preacher and everybody else. Romans three three ten says, "All have sin, from Adam, the first man created, to whoever the last man is created. Amen. Or the last man that's born on the face of planet Earth. Uh, everybody sin, except for Jesus Christ." Somehow or another, he's 100% God and 100% man. He's not 200%. He's 100%. Amen. And by the way, when he did his earthly ministry, he set aside his godness and lived like one of us. He was tired when he was a baby. He needed to, his diaper needed to be changed and all this other stuff. He nursed on his mother's breast, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you, brother. He, he did all these things. We got 10 minutes left. 310, we all need to be there. Are you coming to me in 14D? Again, Jesus Christ's submission. And I want to read something to you, all right? The Word of God. He is, sorry, amen. Uh, uh, keep your finger right here. Turn to John chapter 1. We're in Matthew 13, but turn over to John 1 31. And uh, John makes a confession about Jesus. When he baptizes him. See, everything isn't in one place. God did that on purpose to make us study the word. And, and for that reason, amen. John chapter 1, verses 31 to 34. Make sure I got it right. Yes. I did not know him, but that he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore, I came baptizing with water. I, I, I didn't know he was, a, when I saw him, in verse 29, it says, and we're not reading that part, John saw Jesus coming, and the Holy Ghost, that's him. That's the Messiah. Amen. Verse 30, and John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove. You know, it says, like, like a dove, not a dove. Amen. The Holy Ghost came on him, and he remained upon him. For the, for the rest of his earthly ministry, and he doesn't need it when he goes back to heaven. I, by the way, the same thing for us. He descends on us. We don't need anything else till we go to heaven. Amen. That's all you need. It worked for Jesus. You can work for you too. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending. See what I told you? I said a second ago, the Holy Ghost told him who he was. Who you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Ghost. That's why Jesus is superior. His baptism is going to be, instead of water, the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. That's what you need to testify to be saved, amen, and, and to do what God wants, amen. And uh, uh, let's move on. I was going to turn to Matthew 26, 39. He said, I always do those things that please the Father. Submission again. He is our example. 15. But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. What we just read over there in John was, Jesus, was a, a John the Baptist's reply to it. Uh, the reason we can't do this event today is that's it, and it's, it's a one-time event. Amen? By the way, you can't do it twice. Ask Moses the second time God told them they were supposed to strike the rock the first time. Numbers uh, chapter 20, verse 11. The first time they were supposed to speak to the rock, excuse me, strike the rock twice. They did. The second time they were supposed to just speak to the rock, but they struck the rock. They sinned and disobeyed God. That rock was Christ. He'll only die once on the cross. All of these are one-time events, amen, uh, 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 th that we've been dealing with so far in baptism. You cannot strike him the second time. God gave him the water from the rock back there in the Old Testament, the Jews who were uh, rebellious in the wilderness, amen. But it stopped Moses and Aaron from going into the promised land because they disobeyed God on what seems to be a very small thing to us. When God tells you to do something, it ain't small. It's big. The creator of the universe said to do it. Amen. Uh, to fulfill all righteousness, his death, burial, and resurrection. This is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. By his death, burial, and resurrection, you shall be saved. Amen. Unless you believed in vain. 
Write that down and go over there and look at John 19.30. He's on the cross and right before he dies, he said, Father, Father, uh, uh, why have you forsaken me? And then when he got ready to die, he said, it is finished. I paid for the sin debt of Eric, Steve, and everybody else all over the world for all eternity past, present, and future. It is finished. Amen. It could only be a one-time event. Amen. Um, in verses 16 and 17, and I'll conclude there. These are some very beautiful verses, 16 and 17. And uh, y'all read them with me. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw, John the Baptist saw, the spiritual uh, Holy Ghost uh, coming down like a dove. The Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. 17. And suddenly a voice came from heaven. This is a Trinity verse. Amen. We got God the Son there. We got God the Holy Ghost. And we got God the Father. Amen. The Bible may not say Trinity, but it's all through the Bible in the New Testament. Amen. 1 John uh, uh, chapter 7, uh, chapter 1, verse 7, it's also. Amen. So the Spirit came down on him, and all three of them are working in ministry. By the way, remember, there's only one God. But he reveals himself through the Father, through the Son, and through the Holy Ghost. You notice I made a little triangle there. Amen. And that circle around that triangle is God. But the Father's got a ministry. The Son's got a ministry. And right now, the ministering agent down here on earth is the Holy Ghost. We pray to the Father in the name of the Son that we'll, we'll submit and yield and follow the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because the Holy Ghost is going to do the right thing no matter what you do. Don't grieve Him. Don't quench Him. Follow Him. Do everything he says. Do everything the Word says. The Word and the Holy Ghost will line up. You say, well, I, I just need to listen to the Holy Ghost. I don't need to worry about it. No, you need the Word. Because by knowing the Word, you know how to follow the Holy Ghost. Amen. And in conclusion, verse 17. And this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Can God say that about you? This is my beloved. By the way, how do I make him well pleasing me? 1 John 1 9. Confess your sins. Remember last week I was telling y'all when we did these things. Some people are saying, because you get saved, you ain't going to sin no more. You ain't never going to go to jail again. You ain't never going to do crack again. You ain't going to never do crystal meth. You ain't going to. I hope you don't. You shouldn't. But sometimes our flesh gets a hold of us. Romans chapter 7, right after Paul talks about the victory in Christ and wrecking it so and all that in Romans 6 and 7, he says, but sometimes I do the things I don't want to do. Sometimes I don't do the right things. Remember something, you still sin. 1 John 1, 8 and 10. If we say we have no sin, we lie and deceive ourselves. And uh, 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 verse 10 he says, and if you're saying that and you really believe it, the Holy Ghost ain't in you. You ain't saved. Pray to God. Live for God. Read your Bible. You need all of that. Amen. Hide His Word in your heart. Go to church. Don't forsake the fellowship of another brother. And amen. Get baptized, but not this baptism and not, not the other one that John did for them people. Do the Matthew 28 one. Next week we'll look at Matthew 28, 18, 19, and 20. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And then teaching them to deserve all things. Make disciples of them. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your mercy and grace. Pray for this message to talk to hearts and lives. I pray that... Uh, I did the best I could. I need you to do what I couldn't do. And uh, uh, I'm inadequate. But your word and your spirit are not. Help us as we speak to these men and women uh, that are in a tough situation, incarcerated somewhere in the world. Thank you for Jesus. Now, if you're not saved and you want to be saved, pray this prayer. The prayer don't save you. Belief in Jesus Christ is what says, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that He died for me. Please save me. Please forgive me. In Christ's name, amen. God bless you. Thank you for being with us. Pray for jail ministry. We're praying for you. In Christ's name, have a good day. Amen.